Some time ago, I was having a conversation with my mom about hiking and she asked me a very interesting question. She said, Kyle, why are you so good looking? Now, nah, I'm just kidding. It was actually your mom that asked me that question. But no, for real, my mom asked me, Kyle, when you're out on your hikes, how often are there sketchy sections of trail where somebody who is afraid of heights or cliffs might not be able to handle it? I thought about it for a second and then I told her that the truth is, for most of the hiking I've done, heights and cliffs really aren't much of a factor. On the Appalachian Trail, for instance, it's like, sure, you're up high a lot of the time, but it's pretty rare that you're on like a super technical trail where you're like staring down a cliff like a huge drop off or you're in a place where someone who is afraid of heights would have a tricky time. And this has been my experience not only on the Appalachian Trail, but on most of my other hikes as well. So if you're watching this and you're afraid of heights, don't worry because hiking is still something that you can enjoy without having to put your fear to the test or risk your life in any way, shape, or form. That is, unless you're hiking the Knife Edge Trail on Mount Katahdin. If you're afraid of heights, stay the f away from this trail. Let me tell you why. In case you didn't get the memo from the term, uh, Knife Edge in the name Knife Edge Trail, this trail is narrow as all hell. It has super steep drop-offs up to 2,000 feet in some spots on both sides of it. And even though it's only one mile long, it has a super gnarly reputation among hikers as one of the scariest and toughest hikes on the East Coast. And because you're probably wondering, yes, people have died while hiking it, but more on that in just a second. Clearly, the Knife Edge Trail is a huge challenge, but the funny or, or maybe not so funny part of it is that just getting to the start of the trail is another challenge in and of itself. The Knife Edge Trail is in the great state of Maine. It's on Mount Katahdin, which is located inside the famous Baxter State Park. And if you're wondering where Baxter State Park is, it's basically located in East Bumpf which is just east of, of West Bump, for those that are wondering. And that means for most people, it's gonna require hours in the car just to get to the state park. And that's all assuming you planned your trip far enough in advance to get reservations before they filled up. Once you're inside the park and you made sure to show up before 7 a.m. to secure a parking spot, you still have a long way to go before you can even set foot on the Knife Edge Trail. The trail runs between the summit of Pamela Peak and the summit of Baxter Peak. Pamela is 4,919 feet, and Baxter Peak is the highest point in Maine at 5,269 haha feet tall. <laughs> that, that is so funny, 69. That means that in order to just start the Knife Edge Trail, you have to first climb to the summit of a tough, roughly 5,000 foot peak. And once you're up there, you have to traverse the knife edge before summiting the other 5,000 foot peak. And then you have to hike all the way back down. Hiking either Pamela or Baxter Peak just by themselves is still a tough feat. I mean, either way, you're gonna have to hike up like a steep, rocky trail, a lot of which is above tree line where you're completely exposed to the elements. So yeah, my point is that the knife edge is f***ing hard, even just getting to it is f***ing hard, and you shouldn't try this trail if you're afraid of heights or you aren't in good physical condition with a lot of hiking experience. I'm clearly hyping this trail up, I'm making it sound super gnarly and dangerous, and this begs the question, has anybody actually died while trying to hike the knife edge trail? And unfortunately, the answer is yes, although the number of people who have died isn't really clear to me. I was able to find a few articles that say over 60 people have died on Mount Katahdin itself, but this number doesn't specify how many of the deaths came from the Knife Edge Trail specifically. I do know for a fact, however, that one of the most recent deaths on Mount Katahdin actually did occur because of a fall on the Knife Edge Trail. In early October 2020, a Massachusetts journalist became lost due to fog and darkness while hiking on the Knife Edge Trail, and he eventually ended up falling 50 feet. He survived overnight, but he did end up dying in the hospital after being rescued. It's super sad, and honestly, this should serve as definitive proof that the Knife Edge is dangerous, it's deadly, and it should not be taken lightly. However, let's be honest, tragic accidents occur in all aspects of life. So is the knife edge really that much worse than any other strenuous cliffy hiking trail? Is it really that sketchy for every hiker or is its reputation, dare I say, overblown? 
I mean, I don't know. These are some of the questions that I've had about this trail ever since I first found out about it. It's been something I've been wanting to get to the bottom of for years now, and lucky me, I finally got the opportunity to make the long drive to Baxter State Park in early June of 2021. I did some other hikes while I was there, all of which were really strenuous and difficult, by the way. And on my final day in the park, I got to the Roaring Brook Trailhead and set off to hike the mother knife edge trail here's what it looks like oh yeah and, and before i show you i'm almost at 20,000 subscribers so if you want to help support the dream subscribe hit the like button and tell me what's up in the comment section here we go here's the knife edge just like that we've got our first glimpse of the knife's edge oh fuck yeah <laughs> falling over myself Except for those bees. That's the summit of Pamela. Breather. Maybe get stung. <laughs> and then knife's edge. All right, scurried down from the summit of Pamela there because there's freaking giant bees all over the place. This is the start of knife's edge here. As you can see, it looks pretty gnarly. Um, I stowed my trekking poles in the back of my pack, so hopefully if there's a lot of climbing and stuff, those won't get in the way. It might be a little tricky passing other people. There's like some people ahead of us, like if the trail's super thin, I don't know how that's going to work, but I have a feeling we'll figure it out and uh, just kind of send it. Here we go, knife set. Woo! Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so literally just did like 50 yards of it so it's not like far into the trail yet but so far that climb was pretty nasty, not gonna lie. I was thinking I could like hold the GoPro the whole time and like film a lot of it. Not when it's like that. <laughs> Damn, it's crazy. Other than the first climb there, it hasn't been too bad. I mean, the ridge is very small here, but I don't really feel like unsafe per se. However, we did just pass a few people who were definitely not having a good time. I'm afraid of heights, going real slow. Probably a no-brainer, but if you're afraid of heights, maybe don't come up here. <laughs> oh, check that out. <laughs> and all the way down there too. Oh, more of those bees. F you bees, F you bees. Oh, shit. we're almost at the top now. Ow. Oh, getting a little cocky. Ah, there it is. I'm good. I'm good. Literally at the top now. 
So, you just saw it for yourself, that's the knife edge in all of its glory. Now let me answer the question, is this trail actually as scary as people make it out to be, or is the hype and fear overrated? It's worth noting that clearly my hike was done in optimal conditions, it was the summertime, the wind wasn't too bad, it certainly wasn't raining, so the rocks were completely dry, thus minimizing the chance of slipping. Overall, I really couldn't have asked for a better scenario to be up there, and this definitely factors into my answer. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, uh, I, I do think the scare factor that's built Built up around the knife edge is a bit overblown. The sketchiest part of the trail, in my opinion, was at the very beginning, right after Pamela Peak, and I actually later found out that this part of the trail is called the Chimney, but it's only 0.1 miles long. I mean, other than that stretch, I really didn't think the knife edge was that bad. Now, I still want to be clear, it's a strenuous hike, so don't attempt this trail if you're a beginner, if you're not in good physical shape, or if you're afraid of heights. In fact, at one point, I actually passed a group of hikers who were moving extremely slow because one of the members in their group was like clearly panicking. I guess he was really afraid of the heights. I mean, he wasn't in any danger, but he was just scared shitless because of the giant drop-offs on each side of the trail. With that said, if you're an experienced hiker, if you're in good shape and you've done some other like cliffy like hikes and the heights don't really bother you that much, I don't think the knife edge is going to be something that's drastically harder or scarier than you've already seen. It's a stunning trail, so you should prepare yourself adequately, get out there, and go hike it for yourself.